Hello out there, Bruins fans. Welcome to the Mad Wow. Way to screw it up already. Good lord. <laughs> Don't mind him, folks. He's slush. <laughs> I want those white claws. This isn't a fucking white claw. Okay. This is a Corona hard seltzer, okay. you fucking heathen. So tonight, this is nighttime. Uh, the Bruins played today. Uh, Mike and I weren't able to watch. The, would you? How much of the games did you watch? Uh, probably ten minutes of the first period. Okay, probably on the same level. You saw Swayman the first goal. Swayman gave up. Um, on the Konechny goal. Actually, I, I didn't see uh, any goal score. So you did I probably saw it. Okay. Was, in fact. So, uh, in case you haven't heard, it's not like we haven't talked about him before. Not like I haven't talked to him about, about Mr. Swayman on the last podcast, even though I did. Um, Jeremy Swayman made his NHL debut against... The Philadelphia Flyers, a game in which the Boston Bruins won 4-2. to two. Brad Marchand scored a game-winning shorthanded goal. And then they played Swayman again, and Brad Marchand also scored a game-winning shorthanded goal, which is, which is wonderful. I am so fucking hyped for Jeremy Swayman. He is... For as much as this roller coaster run has been since uh, Lake Tahoe, the Bruins have been, they've sucked and then they've been okay. And then they had the whole Tom Wilson thing with Washington and they just been up and down and they're really pretty lifeless. Jeremy Swayman coming in here, the future is bright, at least in one area, probably the most important area when it comes down to it. I think you don't necessarily need the best goaltender to win a Stanley Cup. But it's, it certainly helps. It certainly helps. You got some guy named Bennigan. Uh, yeah. Asshole named Crocker with a hole in his glove. Oh, man. Glove side. Glove side all, all day. But in that series, Chicago figured it out, and they just were like, uh, we're going to jam-pack everyone in front of the net. <laughs> Uh, but we're not we're not here to talk about old uh, Bennigan's. We've had enough nightmares from him. Yep. How do we feel about Jeremy Swimming, Mike? Oh, can you not be excited? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it it really does. Like I said, it just gets you excited because you know now that if let's just say the sake of argument, Rass walks away at the end of the season. Very probable. It, exactly. Probably done. You may have already checked out already. Um, at least you know the next guy. Maybe he doesn't. Um, they don't just throw him right in and give him the number one job. But at least, at least you know he's there in some capacity. Yeah, I'm just. What excites me? I, I I've been hearing hype about Swayman all year. Uh, he was a Hobie Baker finalist in um, Maine. Uh, we actually, we just missed watching him play uh, in Maine when we went up to Portland. He was a freshman then, but he was actually the starter, and they played back-to-back. They played in Arono, and when Swayman was in net, they won, and then they came down to Portland to play the Terriers. The Terriers kicked the shit out of them. Um, 7 nothing, which was, yeah, that was fun for us. Um... He is a very aggressive goaltender, and it's not like uh, Tim Thomas aggressive and like how you talked about um, Vladar being very aggressive in that way. He explodes off his crease like you don't even you wouldn't even think about it. It's um, I don't I hate to give Jack Edwards credit at all, but he said he said uh, Swayman is a very cerebral goaltender. And you can see it. He is, he's very, he's not the Messiah. That's the life of Brian quote. I'm not the Messiah. Okay. But we're, we're going to look at him as he is the Messiah. Um, I I don't want to get too high, high on him because he had a, a bit of a rough game in that. I mean, 
We, Nicole, you you watched the whole game. What he can't, he was pretty aggressive on that third goal. That third goal, yeah, he was way outside the crease, and um, I mean, I like the aggressiveness, but they gave up that that you know he gave up the goal because of the, because of his aggressiveness. Uh, and the first goal. Yeah, we give up two goals. I'm not gonna like kill the kid. He's 22. Couldn't handle a rebound. Kinecti pop pops it in. Um, we're putting all of that aside, and we're just gonna sort of blindly be like, Jeremy Swayman is the next Patrick Waugh. <laughs> um, I do have to say though, because you guys, there was a goal that was called off due to goaltender interference. Mm-hmm. Um, and he got elbowed right in the head. Um, but still at the same time, he couldn't even see the puck, but his, he, he almost caught it with a glove. Very well positioned. So he was, he was, I thought it was impressive that he almost made that save. He is very technically sound on his positioning. Um, listen to an interview with him back when he was in college and he just seems like such a chill um, we like to think, especially when Tuca came up first, that he was very um, cerebral in that way, is very calm. But a lot of people just say he doesn't give a shit. That's why he's so calm. <laughs> Which, listen, I'm I'm a I'm a Tuca defender. Um, Frank Kevin and I are gonna uh, have our great Tuca debate. Um, Mike, if you would like to monitor that, that would be that'd be wonderful because he's he's very militantly. Anti Tuka and E T to tottering. Yeah, some days some days I like him, some days I don't. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm a little yeah. he's, he's the type of guy that you'll you'll shit on for a week and then he'll play out of his mind and he'll be like, Oh my god, this is great, you know, you'll you know, if he plays like that like this the rest of you go and win a cup and then he'll have one of them typical Tuka wet farm sort of games where he lets in three or four just horrible goals that just seem to either squeak in or he just, I don't know if his angle's off or whatever it is, but then it almost brings you back down to earth and be like, all right, well, this is... And he certainly doesn't do himself any favors with the fans the way he reacts to games like those and he just sort of shrugs them off. Yeah, I mean, but that's, that's, that's all well and good. Like, okay, this guy is, you know, he's not going to get himself frazzled and, and be like, But it, then he does get angry from time to time, like randomly, just bouts of fucking anger. I remember the Game Providence where he gets really pissed off and like destroys his stick and just like just has a tantrum off the ice. So he's a very um, he's a very interesting character. I don't want him to retire. I've I've been very um, I, I've been very vocal about this. I was happy to hear early the season. It's like, oh, maybe I'll play two more years. Maybe, which would which would be. I know you want to pave the way for old uh, Swayman there, but. Well, here's the thing. Let's let's just say for the sake of argument, he decides. You know, he just comes out because you know the guy's just a. He's he's an oddball. Mm. You know, you know, just tomorrow just says, yeah, I'll, I want to play the two more years. Do the Bruins want him back? Don Sweeney and Cam Neely want to bring him back. Depending on the cap, it that's what it would depend on. I don't think he'd go anywhere else. That's the thing. Well, no, he won't, and that's kind of what is going to that. I mean, this offseason kind of you know hamstrung them a little bit. They probably would have traded. Yeah, they probably would have just for anything just to clear out the seven million dollars. I with the cap, and then they probably would have just brought someone else in, knowing you know, and obviously the way they feel about. Swayman and everything, knowing that this kid's probably not too far behind. If we can just have some kind of a stop gap, um, it, it wouldn't be the worst thing. I think that's what, if you bring him back at two years, two to three million dollars, you have Swayman in still on that entry level contract that aligns perfectly for you. You have 
you're phasing a goaltender out and you're phasing the new guy in that's, you know, it's like, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo under a certain quarterback that, you know, bitched and moaned and forced to trade. Um, but that's a different sport. Um, but like that, that would be a perfect sort of scenario. That's what I want. Is Vladar a good backup for Swing? So what I actually think is going to happen is Tuka's going to retire and a, a goaltending duo will be Vladar and Swayman. That's what I think is going to happen. That's not what I want to happen. Um, I, I like Vladar. Vladar's, Vladar's been clutch for them in, in, in some of these games. I mean, he, he cannot handle the puck very well at all, <laughs> um, which is pretty evident. And he, uh, that's one issue of his game, but I like, I like to say, but he tried. <laughs> he is he's like a bigger Tim Thomas, which is like that's we don't want to get into yeah. because Tim Thomas was the two time Vezina Trophy winner and won a Con Smythe, so we're not gonna like um, uh, and was right to build his bunker as 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 he came out of the bunker and be like, oh, is there was a virus here. I was fine with it. I had all this food. Go figure. Huh? Yeah, I was right. <laughs> I was right. That's what he should have. A, I was right tour. I'm a prepper and I was correct about it. I'm sitting here with all my guns and all my cans of food while you people spy all this fucking toilet paper. <laughs> Tim Thomas was right. Well, the funny thing would be if Tim Thomas had all that and in fact ran out of toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm sure he has plenty of... Um, Tires that need pumping in his. Uh, <laughs> well, that's the one. Thanks to Roberto. All right, I want to talk about this game against the Washington Capitals, and I'm going to steal um, the Morning Brew podcast with uh, Jaffe and Razor, and they said one of their most complete performances of the season. Uh, they were very methodical in that game. And that sort of game is what they were doing earlier in the season where they had a game plan, they went out and they executed. Very methodical and gave me a little hope with Swayman being in there. They still got themselves in a little bit of trouble with um, with the two five-on-three goals that they gave up. But I want to say... A lot of that was bad officiating, which it happens. Um, but I was angry when it happened at the time. But the more I think about it, they were resilient to, to stick around. Uh, Smitty pops the, uh, the power play goal uh, late in the third. And I'm thinking, okay, this is one of, this is one of their better performances. And... I would like their chances against that Washington team. I don't know what it is. It's the no hopey, no hopey factor. I was going to say, like, exercise that demon, and he's finally you know, yeah. off to different things, and you know they're not as scary. Yet. Yeah, it's like Darth Vader without his mask. It's like that's the facade of like fear, but once it's gone, it's just an old guy, and because the Capitals are pretty fucking old, as they have that big lumbering fuck back. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, Hopi, it was like that, that Ken Dryden factor. Oh, yeah. Just couldn't beat the guy. He was the modern Ken Dryden. They, there was nothing they could do. And I mean, then finally, Super Bowl Sunday, a couple of years ago, they finally beat him. Was that and, the they just, yeah, and they scraped by. At, the, at that time, that, that's when they sort of broke through. And then they had a game against him in 29, or maybe it was last season. Was it, last, it was last season where they... They scored like seven goals on him. Oh, yes. Yeah, they had that game. Um, and he wasn't as much an issue, but still, I'm not. If I see Braden Holby in a Capitals uniform <laughs> in a playoff series, I'm like, nah. No, get your golf game ready. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, I was very impressed with them in that game. Um do you guys have any thoughts on that game in particular? Because I, I just think the methodical way that they went about... Uh, Samsonov did not look particularly good, but 
the whole game plan is just it just worked and that's what we need more than that's the sort of life that I'm talking about not the rah, rah, you hear our guy we hear you back sort of stuff so how did you guys feel about that game I mean I think you're absolutely right I think one of their best games um, on the season so far um I this was another game due to work that I was forced to mostly listen to on the radio. Um, you get the mental didn't picture. Really actually, get to see the penalties. Yeah. But I could tell by Beersy's reaction. Yeah. Beersy was pissed. And uh, like, the, yeah. he, it was almost like a you, you know how uh, Jack and Brooke kind of get sort of. Oh, we know. Like, oh, I think the next penalty is going to be on the Yeah. Oh, Beersy was doing that. I, I, I don't think he does that. Beersy is, he will just, he will straight up admit yeah. when something's, when when the Bruins, he'll, he'll call the Bruins out. Like, the Bruins don't look very good right now. It's like, I really like Beersy. That's what happens when the team doesn't run part of the radio station. Beers and Gosh. Oh, man. What a dream team. That's the dream team right there. And they're, they're, they're gone. They're gone. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think it's a, it's a big building block. It's, it's something that you like, okay, we, we, we've, we have, we've had a lot of injuries certainly on the back end and, um, but we've had forwards who are not performing up to the standards of the last season. Um, which is, that's something else we can get into. Uh, they, oh, oh, um, what was that? No? I'm glad that they won two in a row. Oh yeah, that's that's another thing. It was, you know, a win, loss, win, loss. That's the Swayman magic. At one point, you, it was just great. Now we have two wins in a row. Let's build off of that. Even though we lost today, um, I still thought they played pretty decent. Yeah. Um, and their previous game, I oh. They got goals from, you know, lead and <laughs> was on, you know, so we're getting goals not from the top six. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 it's certainly good. And um Smith on the power play. Yeah. Uh which was really and that move bad bad shorty by Marshawn in that game. That was that's just a sick highlight reel stuff. Sick and there's nothing even if the Samsonov is playing at the top of his game, there's almost nothing you can do about it. And Ovechkin, I wanna point out on this play, Ovechkin back checked. Mm-hmm. Like he back checked really hard. And it was cause Young kids, if you're listening, you go harder than that, even if you're not going to get the pass. It's because you're going to draw a defender out of the place, out of place. And he drew Ovechkin out of place, and it's just it was easy for Marshawn to score that goal. It was just, but it's just ridiculous, ridiculous move. Um, I see this as a building block towards something. I don't see a scenario which they where they don't make the playoffs. Uh, I mean, it can happen. I don't want it to happen, certainly. Um, yeah, they're, they're kind of in that weird... They're, they're almost, <laughs> I don't want to say locked into it, but for the time being, they're kind of locked into number four. The, yeah. Where they're like six points away from either team on either side. And you are... And they have six games against Buffalo coming up? Is it six or five? Yeah. If they don't make the playoffs, ooh, boy. <laughs> uh, hell to play. But I, I just think it's this is okay, this is what your team is. You've 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 had a lot of inju- injuries. Maybe a budding player at, at goalie and you even if, you know, Tuka comes back, he can, you know, he can lead you there. You still gotta make a move. And as we see uh, <laughs> I say this every year. It's like, why are they waiting to the last minute in the trade deadline? Why, 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 why? Uh, Lou Lamarillo makes a deal. Kyle Palmieri, Travis Ajak to the Islanders for a first, a fourth, and two prospects. Hey, and the two prospects, if you want to call them, that's a very... So basically, who wasn't even... You know, the devil's not going to get anything out of this. Mm. One of those was like 27. Yeah. Is he a prospect? No. Or oh, HL. Yeah. Another one, I, I forget the kid's name, but I do remember looking it up. And he was a former first round pick, but just not. Um, you know, hasn't really done anything. But so you're getting both of those guys for first and fourth. The prices seem so incredibly low. 
low. Which is very curious as to what they're going to do. Uh, I the more I think about it, the more I'm like, are they? Uh, they I don't actually like Hall, but I think maybe they're gonna shoot for Hall. Uh, At this point, if it's only gonna cost you a second or a third, yeah, you kind of have to just roll the dice and, and see if the reason if he hasn't been very good is because he's on the Buffalo Sabers, mm. and he realized that you know pretty much from day one that this was a humongous mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, not a mistake for his bank account, certainly. Um, I, I just blame someone for going for the money, but at the same time, I just I, I don't. There's something about all. I just I don't like him. I don't I don't know what it is. Like it, it said a lot to me. Where it's like when he was with Arizona, and he's like, I want to go somewhere with where their winning is important. Winning matters to me the most. And then you sign with the Buffalo Sabres. Like, yeah. Huh? Confusing. <laughs> what? Very confusing. It's like, just be honest. Be like, I'm fucking going where the money is. It's like, just... You know, here's my thing in, you know, just reading a couple of things here and there over the last week or so, you kind of get this feeling that Sweeney's trying to do all the shopping at once and get this you know, get his. It really should be a top six, but you know he's going to end up with someone that's going to be classified as a middle six forward yeah. and a top four defensive. Yeah. yeah I, you get the feeling that he's trying to get them in the same deal. If Nashville was out of it, but they've climbed their way back in, uh, you could probably shoot. This is ambitious. I don't know if they can actually swing it, but uh, Forsberg for Ekholm. I mean, Forsberg and Ekholm for something. Uh, I don't. It's not. It's not happening now because no, Nashville would be amazing. It would. I, I don't even think they have the capital to do it. This is the biggest. Like you're gonna have straight draft picks. You're gonna have to give them up, um, which is concerning because you don't have a heck of a lot coming down the pipe. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna have to probably not re-sign David Krejci next season and you, if Tuka comes back he's going to have to take a big pay cut Definitely. and you're probably going to have to go after some free agents I don't really know who's out there I don't know if they don't re-sign if they don't bring back Krejci next season I don't who's going to be the second line center well, I, I, you, it, see like I was going to say that but at the same time it's like you know this was a chance for Krejci to get that take that next step mm. and prove that, okay, maybe he can operate as a second line center. Well, he but needs to stop scoring on his own net or on the other net. He needs to stop being yeah. well, true. He, he's, he has flashed it sometimes at points this season, but he has not been the player that he was last season. He was fantastic last season and from the playoffs in 2019. Um, that's the Charlie Coyle that we know. And maybe he's being more of the Minnesota Charlie Coyle. Um, but at least we know that player is there. Um, and I know he's he's getting paid a lot of money. But at the same time, that's not your second line. That's not your second line center if you don't bring back Krejci. I think really the only available center will this offseason will probably be Nugent Hopkins. And that's just... Uh, uh, honestly, it's just like it's that's it, that on its own. It's like Nugent Hopkins is kind of not exactly the player that. I mean, where was Nugent Hopkins? Say, was he taken first overall? The first overall. He was when Edmonton had what was it, three years in a row. Yeah, he was one of them, I believe. Yeah, and it's been completely overshadowed by the best two players in the game with uh, Dried Silo and McDavid. Um, and I don't even think he plays center anymore. I think he plays wing, but that's what it, his natural position is center. He was drafted as a center. He came yeah, starting the league as a center. Yeah, he was. When Edmonton had three, uh, they won the lottery three times. They went Hall, him, and then. Uh, Oh God! What a great pick! I think even Hall, when he was with that, he was a I wouldn't say a draft bust, but he was a disappointment. And he, and then yeah, I think if Edmonton had to do it over again, they would have taken it. Yeah, 
And then when he tra- got traded to New Jersey, that's when he had his breakout season MVP. It's like, so you look at Hall, it's like, oh, he's, you know, a first overall pick and he's an MVP, but it's like, really? Yeah. It's not exactly. Listen, I'll take him. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely take him on this team. Like, I don't know. I think you might agree with me. You kind of want a name. He, you don't want to end up with another Kakakashi. Yes. <laughs> yes. Never heard of. And yeah, he, he had to throw the first round pick for whatever reason to get rid of back as his contract. Probably could have done any offseason anyways, but whatever. And you've got nothing. Hmm. Nothing. And you don't even know what the hell's wrong with the guy. Yeah, I keep forgetting he's on the team when he's some memory. Oh, yeah, that, yes. There's a possibility, like, say that when the dust settles and the girls pick up a, a peach or two uh, at the deadline, they may not be a spot fan mm. if and when he's ever healthy. If they actually kind of get the pieces that they need to. And, and say they go on a run for a week and every line that they've come up with is gelled in some way. This guy has no space. You know, what are you going to do? Are you just going to inject him in the lineup and then disrupt whatever chemistry the third or fourth he's, he's not a fourth line player the way he plays. He's not, but that would probably be the only line if, you know, everything else is gelling. Well, you, they'll probably, I could see them jettisoning, jettisoning um, the invisible man who scored today, old Jake DeBrusque. Um, I could see them uh, dumping him at the deadline. Was that a nice goal? I wasn't able. We weren't able to see it. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Did you notice him out there? I keep. Yeah, he was. He was a little bit more noticeable. Even last game, I felt like he, you know, was headed towards the net more than he had been. Well, he was starting to pick it up before he hit code protocol. Yeah. I'm not, been back. not using that as an excuse. No, I know. Um, but since he's been back, he's I feel like he's picking it up a little bit more. And it was a pretty good goal. Uh, he was excited, obviously. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I have to do something. Away from me. <laughs> I scored. Yeah, and now he just needs to score tomorrow. And, you know, then he's going to look good. Tell you, that's when he was... Uh, his rookie year and the year after he, he he got really streaky and the Bruins were winning. The Bruins were winning when Jake DeBrusk was scoring goals. And that's why in our season preview, I'm like, I want Jake DeBrusk to make a huge leap. Has not happened at all. In, the, in fact, he is regressed. Well, if he starts scoring, that third line becomes legitimate. It does. It, it, it brings up Coyle's game. You know, um, and I think Kuhlman on the right side there has been pretty good. Yeah, Kuhlman's been solid. Yeah. So I, I feel like maybe if Jake Bruss gets his act together and um, they keep the lines, I know we're going to talk about this later, but like that changing the lines, I think Smitty's doing a great job on the first line. You know, I think the Chats play together pretty good. So I don't, maybe we'll have three solid lines. I don't know. But it all depends on Coyle and DeBrusque, really. Watch this happen. Watch DeBrusque have a couple of them. Like, you score today. Watch him have a, a crazy game tomorrow. And that's reason enough for them to not trade him. Mm-hmm. And then, and then he yeah. disappears again. And you, you, you know. You, you had a chance to potentially actually involve him in a deal and be like, he's red hot, you know, someone someone take him, you know, like, you can not have to worry about this type of stuff with him anymore. But I could see Sweet be like, you know, maybe we got something. And then deadline passes, you decide not to trade him and they do whatever it is that they do, and then he just disappears. I could absolutely see that because he's really the only player from the disastrous 15 draft that's been any good. Um, I know Sinesh, the Seneton has played like two games, but he hasn't really done much. Um, I think Cassidy trusts him a lot. Yeah. I know there's been where he's been benched for long periods of games. Yeah. Um, and Zaboral 
has definitely taken a big step back in probably the last couple of years. He hasn't been very good, but like this is what I would expect from a young defense. I am not going to jump down Zaboral's throat because he has been for for a rookie defenseman uh, coming into this league. He has been pretty solid, and it takes defensemen two hundred games yeah. before they. And that's remember when. Um, Carlo hit around the 200 game mark. He just he he hit another level, um, and was like a shutdown guy uh, from then on. Um, so is, I I don't want to go too crazy on Zaboro, but he's certainly not uh, Shabbat. That that's so it's when you when you look at it, Sweeney. Uh, I don't know if he's actually going to be like this, where he's like, oh, well, I draft the guy, I believe in the guy. So I don't know if I want to like. Let go of him, but I think they should. I think it's it's time for him to move on. Yeah. It's it's a it, it, change of scenery would be good for him. And if it's him, if he's the difference to you know, whatever trade that Sweeney wants to make it like a big impactful deal, and you don't get that done because you didn't want to include DeBrusk, that'd be a crime. It's, a, it's negligent. Yeah, it's negligent at this point because. You, you have to look at the, the bigger picture. The guy has done almost nothing. Mm. He disappears for games on end, and you're just like, where is this guy? And it would help. This is thinking, thinking towards the next season. It would help if you'd have... Was it three point six seven? He makes you have that off the books next season because you have a lot of money coming off, and you might as well have more com- money coming off. And I don't know who's going to be available as a free agent, but you. One thing that they also have to keep in mind um, <laughs> on Monday at the deadline is the expansion draft. Yeah. And you know, usually Sweeney likes to get guys with which was part of the bullshit reasoning for getting Kevin Cotton. Yeah. The next year. But do you want to acquire someone with term with the possibility that you might not be able to protect that player because you have guys with no movement clauses and they automatically get held over? Yeah. You lose this guy for nothing. I mean, yeah, maybe you work a side deal with Ron Francis in Seattle. Like, okay, don't take him. We'll send you this. But I guess from what I read, like, did, there have been teams that have approached him, you know, on the QT. Like, what would it take? And he's playing highball. Like, he wants, like, first round picks and players. Like, he's not fooling around. Yeah. And I can't say that I blame him. He wants, I think he wants what Vegas was. It might not happen because I think teams are going to be a little smarter. No, you just bring your eye, go on, and then <laughs> you make your run. <laughs> Uh, which was fucking ridiculous that he got fired. So it was like Vegas has such high expectations. Are is like relax, like calm down. It's really ridiculous. In your inaugural season, you go to the cup. Yeah, um, but I mean, at least they have standards, unlike our owner. Um, uh, I'm almost certain it's going to be Lazan who's going to be taken. It's. I'm almost certain of it. Mm-hmm. He's just. If you're Ron Francis, you got to look at this. It's like, say that you wouldn't even probably want Grizzly if they didn't protect him. He's a young, up and coming defenseman who is making eight hundred fifty thousand dollars the year that you you're going to have him. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's going to be an RFA after. Yeah, I'd be taking him. <laughs> Now, I mean, I, I, I don't have the rules in front of me, but, like, isn't it, if you remember correctly, that, you know, a player has to be the X amount of years before they can, um, or they've been with the organization for X amount of years before they can be eligible to be exposed? Because then, like, there are certain players that are exempt uh, from being claimed. Like, say, whoever gets the first overall pick this year. Yeah. You know, say they, you know, the guy that they draft, Seattle just can't pilfer that, that plan. They, they, they can't do it. Yeah. Um, I think Lazan, even if, I, I don't know what the rule is exactly, but 
Zlatan played for them last year. He's playing for them this year. It's just like he, he's. Of course you want them to take John Moore. <laughs> you want them to take somebody like that so you never have to see his ugly mug ever again in the Bruins uniform. But you know that's not going to happen. Yeah. Take him to be the fucking janitor at Climate Change Awareness Arena in there in Seattle. <laughs> um, we need to have a little aside about um, Nick Ritchie. Nicole. What is, what is, what is your issue with Nick Ritchie? What is wrong with thick Nick? Listen. Okay, I said we don't need to talk about this on here, and I just needed to get that. No, right we now. talk about it. This is this is what this is Bruins therapy. This is what this whole point is. No one's listening to this. This is just <laughs> okay. It just he needs to cut his hair, yeah. and and it's not like I get it. Like DeBrusk had longer hair, Pasternak had longer hair, but that piece of crap that's coming out of his helmet in the front. Alfalfa. A front alfalfa. I just, I, dude, just, come on. <laughs> like, tame it down or something. It's just, it's very irritating when you look at these white helmets and then all of a sudden you see this brown hair popping up, looking like a crazy person. I just, Nick Ritchie, if you're listening, you're not. But, like, let's do something about it. Because it's really, it's, it's just you're goober enough already. Yeah, like I said, he already looks homeless. Oh, well, Mike said he looks homeless. Mike, like you said, he looks homeless. You know, I mean, he's playing okay. He's, been, he's been solid yeah, this season. He's, he's good. I thought he was going to be a zero oh. this season, and he's been pretty solid. And then all of a sudden he started scoring power play goals. Yeah. Going out of style. Well, he would score more power play goals if he just... just I just all I want to do is like even who's the medical guy? Just go with the stupid the medical, medical guy. And just cut it because it's so annoying. I can't deal with it. I mean, I can deal with it. Obviously, if you're scoring and making what waves or like whatever, I don't care. Just it's just annoying. Sorry. See, we talk. We talk about the important important issues here. So. This is, um, we want to talk about the back end, the defensive depth of the Boston Bruins, which has been tested quite a bit this season. Um, currently, we have Brandon Carlo out. We have Charlie McAvoy out, the two best defensemen. And now we have um, uh, fucking Grizzly out, who got hurt. With a s- 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 vague, vague, it's all vague. It's just, yeah, it's injury. <laughs> he's injured. Body injuries, and they don't tell you. Yes, it's he's he's hurt on this area. Yeah. Show me where uh, on the door where she touched you. It's <laughs> upper body or lower body. Um, <clears throat> luckily Kevin Miller's come back. He's been, solid. he's been he's been he's he's been pretty he has been pretty solid and which I'm surprised at since he, when he came when he first came back that first game against the Devils his first game of the season man he was on it dude he was he he was on it and now it's like it's nice to have him um be the um <clears throat> Adam McQuaid of this generation yeah. where he's always hurt but he's reliable when he's there um. Yeah, but see, when you say that, at least Kevin Miller gets hurt kind of legitimately. Mm. <laughs> you know, yeah, like <laughs> slip it on a banana peel. You know, pull a quater and you know, fall behind the, you know, behind your, your your own net and you're up for two weeks. Mm. Uh, yeah. Um. So, <clears throat> Joe Haggerty, the brilliant. Bruins um, beat writer or not even anymore. He got fired from the athletic, right? Because there's there some shit. Didn't he get fired from NBC something? Boston. NBC Boston. Good. Good. He doesn't deserve to have a job. He's a fucking moron. But 
he had he had a very interesting take where he said, "Ah, oh, Sedano Chara's he's proven the Bruins wrong again and again all season because he apparently had a fight with someone or whatever." It's like okay, um, Hags, you're a fucking idiot. You're a fucking moron. Like you know the situation that that he wasn't willing to accept that the role that the Bruins wanted from, for him. Mm-hmm. They didn't. He didn't want that. He would be playing a lot right now because of all the injuries. But this is not what what was set up. This is not what they 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 had wanted for him. And and as you said about um, that McAvoy. Yeah, absolutely. McAvoy doesn't take that next step that he has this season if Chara was still here. Chara, Chara yeah. would still be the number one, even though he's 44 years old. And he doesn't play at that Norris Trophy caliber. He, you know, he never will again. You know, that's just the way it is. But he, to, to say that he's proving them wrong no. because their defense has been young and consistent and hurt, so he'd be playing, that makes no sense. Yeah, true. Someone that's lacking... The big picture. Charles says, we'll point out when the Bruins have been proven wrong, because we do it quite a lot. Uh, on this, um, I feel like, no, shut the fuck up. You're a clown. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I love Chara. He's, I, I, I love the, I love the man. He's, he's like a lanky, weird, six foot nine teddy bear that you don't want to hug um i don't know why i phrase it like that very very odd yeah it's it is weird it's very strange you know that always seems to happen especially in the nhl when you see an aging star in another uniform at the very end of their career that just doesn't look right yeah at least he didn't fuck over his team and then bitch out his fellow teammates on national television like a little bitch and then go somewhere else and then try to assemble a dream team. Um, um, like other... Like, that's a different sport. This is a different sport. I'm sorry. I get a different sport. Um, yeah, so Hags is a fucking moron. That's a ridiculous thing to say. Um, I still hear things from... I hear this from the fucking hockey guy, which the hockey guy is a Bruins fan. Like he, and he watches like everything. So maybe he has just, he's just different perspective on it. It's like, Oh, the Bruins still need a defenseman. It's like, what? what? Is defense really the issue? I'm sorry. Like what is the, their goals against? Like, yeah. This is a false narrative. Fake news. It really, hasn't, it really hasn't been the issue. The issue has been keeping them all healthy. Yeah. So if you're going to go out and get a defenseman to just sort of supplement until everyone gets you know healthy and ready to go, hopefully for a playoff run, then okay, fine. It, but it's not the priority. No, absolutely not. It, and it hasn't been all season long. Yeah. Priority has been them scoring up fucking goals. Yeah. That's the priority. Yeah. Go and find someone that does that. I'm sick and tired. Every year we're going through this. Yeah. Every year since John Sweeney has been the general manager, what have they tried to find at the deadline? They were to play with David Krejci on the second line because they just don't have that player. Yeah. It should be Jake Debrus. But once again, the ghost of Nebraska is nowhere to be in mm. where. Yes. Today, he came out of nowhere, scored a goal, and pulled him back into hiding in front of the family. So, uh, we got uh, Grizz out. Probably going to see who was uh, probably Tenorti. I'm hoping to see Achan. 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 Yes. I don't know why it's Achan when it's spelled A C H A N. Wait, is that no A H C A N? I misspelled it wrong. But that, that's not important. But um, there's been a lot of talk about Achan being like the next Tory Krug. Uh, 
because of the similar stature, the similar similar way where he's signed as a free agent out of college. And I'm just like, he had that first game against Buffalo, but just like let's throw him in there again. Let's, let's see what we got. I think they're making the playoffs. So he's, if if he's, I mean, he's a body at the very least. And the their depth chart on defense, you know. You have kind of nothing to lose, but then again, they're probably going to have to go anyways. Yeah, you're scraping the bottom of the barrel right there. They're sitting Kevin Miller tomorrow for maintenance. Maintenance, yeah. So you know you're... This is bionic knee. He needs some software updating on that. Kevin Miller is robot. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we want to do... We want to talk about... Um, the permanent line changes that actually took place. Bruce Cassie was just like, oh, I guess. I guess I'll do the thing that, you know, is common sense and split up. <laughs> um, <laughs> split up the... Um, and drop, uh, drop Pasternak down with Krejci. And Krejci's so relieved to have, oh, hey, I have a winger. That's wonderful. You are my friend now. Yes, we are friends. Um, they're not German. <laughs> uh, yeah. <clears throat> Smitty moved up to the first line. And I, th- I think he's flourished. He's... Uh, it took him a while to settle in with the team, but I think uh, he's played particularly well at this point in the season. And is kind of the guy that we were looking for when when that signing first happened and it was probably a little bit too much hype on him because he's he's really just the third line but I mean you plug him up it was it was the hype yes we don't have much to get hyped about Exactly. When you don't give us anything, the one thing you do give us, we have to talk. Yeah, I'm literally about to form the religion of Swayman. So this is like, this is what we do. We blow things out of proportion. Exactly. Yes, he's looking very, very good. I would like almost at home. Yeah. Well, I hope they keep it because the third period today, Kostnak was back on the first line again. So I don't know if that was just because they were trying to generate another goal. Nuclear option. That's basically when fucking uh, Pittsburgh was ever struggling. They're like, we're putting of, of, of Malkin and Crosby together. Cause this is what they call the nuclear option in Pittsburgh. Um, it, at that point in the game, it's just like, okay, yeah, it, it, I get it. It's going to happen like, every so often. Cause you know, yeah, exactly. You just don't want tomorrow the, the lineup comes out and it's Bergeron Washington. Yeah. Because yeah. then at this point, what are we doing here? Yeah. So, yeah, you want to put that line back together because the, the, the perfection line is fine. But what about everything? Yeah. Everything else that doesn't work and hasn't worked all season long. And the first line works just as well. I mean, not just as well. Obviously, not just, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Smitty had an assist on Bergeron's goal today. And it's like, because, hey, they got in on the four check, believe it or not. It was, it was crazy. We got the puck in deep and, and went in there and won the puck. Um, but um, it's one, another one of these building blocks where it's like, okay, we have this. We, we, we need to stick with this until the eventual disappointing deadline move where we're going to pretend like the player that Don Sweeney gets is the winger for Krejci and then they'll have to move back in the playoffs. Um, or, or if it's an actual legit move, which we're all hoping for, um, maybe you rejigger the lines a little bit. Uh, but I... I don't understand what the fuck took him so long to change the line. What, yeah. Permanent? What? What took him so fucking long? I mean, it, it really has been this way since he took over as head coach. Yeah. Look, just petrified to break that line. Yeah. You know, it, or when he does it, he does it for half a game. And then, before you know it, the third period starts, and they're back together. 
you know, it was nice and it was refreshing. Multiple games in a row where he came up with that lineup. Mm. You know, with the first and second lines. Very refreshing. And it led to a win. It led to, like, the stuff that we've been talking about. It's like... <laughs> they gotta know how fucking stubborn they've been. Like, they, got, they have to realize this. Like, I... Uh, like, have a come to Jesus moment. The whole organization, they just need to, everyone needs to sit in a room and be like, what the fuck are we doing here? Can we make these line changes? We have to bang our head against the fucking wall so many, so many times. Is this, is this really what we need to do? I'm glad that they finally did it, but I can still say, what the fuck? Yep. Don't wait so long in the playoffs. Before we end this, I need to. I do need to say, like, I've been. I haven't been very happy with the team over the past few weeks, but this past week it's been pretty good. Um, I don't need them to be the number one team in this division. We don't need them. We just need to make the playoffs and be playing well in the playoffs, mm-hmm. or being playing well into the playoffs. And then I'm t- this playoff is going to be fucking crazy. This is this is so weird. This is such a strange situation that you have no fucking. I have no idea who who is going to. The Florida Panthers still the number one team in the NHL right now. Like, uh, Colorado. Oh, Colorado it jumped up, but like at that uh, at a certain point it was Florida. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like uh, not saying Florida is bad. It's just like they haven't gotten. They've got. They have a lot of talented players. Just haven't gotten their shit together. Uh, I have no fucking idea who's going to win the Stanley Cup. You, you figure it would be either like Colorado or Tampa Bay, but like that's not always the case, especially in hockey. It's like it's, it's like it's so hard to repeat. Anything can happen. And then when you get to that, you know, NHL Final Four, which is basically where it will be the chip, yeah. you know, who will be there in, at that Final Four? And you could get some crazy... You could get, in theory, a Bruins Montreal Canadian Stanley Cup final. Oh yeah. You could potentially get. That. Oh yeah. That would be wonderful. And nerve wracking. It if they win. Well, yeah. It would be it would, great. I. They would win, because what they, whatever the whatever Canadian team comes out of the North. They gotta be, they gotta play probably in the United States. I don't see the yeah. I don't see the border being open at that point. So they're not gonna be they're not gonna have the home cooking. <laughs> <laughs> they're not gonna have the home cooking. Yeah. They won't have the. What would be really nice would be the Maple Leafs. Game seven. <laughs> they would they would have game seven in whichever building that they're playing in probably because of all the fraudulent points they rack up in that fucking shitty division. Yeah, I know, I know. The Canadians are all like, we don't have a team in our division that's lost all the games that Buffalo's lost. It's like, okay, that's one team. It's like, yeah. fucking Vancouver sucks. Calgary is falling Ottawa. apart. It's Ottawa. Awful. It's like, get the, get the, the fuck Ottawa. Get the fuck Ottawa. Get the awful Ottawa Senators. Um, <laughs> I would, I, that's actually, I would actually be disappointed. I, I would, it's, it's not going to happen, but I'd, I would want a legit full capacity crowd at the Bell Center in Montreal for a Stanley Cup final game and then come back here. That, that's just like, it's fucking, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. It won't happen because we can't have a full capacity crowd, even though it's fucking fine in Texas that they completely opened up and their their numbers are going down for some fucking reason. I don't know. It's really weird. Um, is there anything else we want to get to? Any, any other hairstyles we want to critique? <laughs> No, 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 I think yeah, we cut pretty, it's been pretty solid. Um, this has been the cult of meth bear. See, I did it right this time. This has been the cult of meth bear podcast. Have a good night and go fuck yourself. <laughs>